making sure that businesses don't lose out. In Jammu Kashmir, it was the decision to procure apples in the last season. And government put forward its uh, own commitment to buy apples if anybody had any stress, if anybody had any problem, and ensured that adequate funds were available. No farmer should have any problem in selling his produce. Despite the efforts of certain elements, divisive elements, terrorists to try and disrupt the process, I am glad to see that the traders in the region have procured the apples in more cases than not. The government was standing by to support and procure any amount of apple that came our way. But we didn't find too many apples coming to us because the trade and business worked to buy those apples, transport them at a good value. And it's, it's very relieving and very encouraging to see that the trade did not get bitter with a couple of uh, incidents that happened and continued to work. And I think it's this spirit, this indomitable spirit of Jammu Kashmir, which will take the entire region to greater and greater heights of development. In fact, uh, the mock al Muto, as uh, I was informed, of ushering hope, reform and prosperity to Jammu, Kashmir and Ladakh is what I think will drive this engagement further and which will help us to come up with the roadmap with the agenda that we should all collectively work for, should all collectively aspire to achieve in a defined time frame. Only yesterday we celebrated the, 20, the 70th anniversary on 26th November of the Indian Constitution. I think the makers of the Constitution had never envisaged that Jammu and Kashmir will always remain alienated from the rest of the country. It's a matter of pride that Constitution Day was celebrated across the length and breadth of Jammu and Kashmir yesterday for the first time. It's also a great uh, tribute to Baba Sahib Ambedkar Ji, to Sadar Patel, to Dr. Shama Prasad Mukherjee, all of whom worked for the integration of Jammu and Kashmir. We have Sadar Patel who was able to bring so many princely states into the Union of India. And we had on the other hand Jammu Kashmir which remained almost eliminated, almost cut off with the huge pace of development that was possible given the large amounts of funds that were continuously being sent to Jammu and Kashmir. In fact, the statistics show that a disproportionate investment was sought to be made by governments across the years, governments of all political parties, made every effort to provide more and more benefits to the state, uh, then state of Jammu and Kashmir. Unfortunately, money never reached the common man, reached the people of the region. Infrastructure did not develop as it should have. And uh, I think we lost a lot of opportunities in so many years, which we are now trying to get back on the table, get back that mojo in the people of Jammu and Kashmir to get back to business, get back to higher and higher levels of economic activity. In fact, uh, the Prime Minister of 15th August made one comment, and I'd like to go, there is no time to delay or neglect problems. I think it's a very, very telling one-line comment, which tells the people of India that it's time that we all started addressing areas of concern in every respect, be it economic areas, be it social areas, be it political areas. We need reform, we need change, we need a better future for the people of India. And I think procrastination is not going to get this country and our people anywhere. We really need to go aggressively to try and bring good governance into the country, to try and bring back in the whole region of Jammu, Kashmir, Leh, Ladakh, Kargil, the glorious days of the past. I remember my very first, or amongst my very first vacations in the early 70s when I was a child was to Jammu, Kashmir, when we visited Gulmar, Pahalgaon, uh, on the Dal Lake, we, I, I think we even stayed in the household on the Dal Lake at that point of time. And while I was very small, I have one memory 
which uh, of course most people in this room will not know the person, but uh, Prabhu Chawla Ji will remember the person I am referring to. Uh, Rajendra Sharma, who used to be the parliamentary secretary of the Bharatiya Jansa and then the Bharatiya Janta Party in parliament. He used to handle all the affairs of the BJP and elsewhere in Jansa in parliament. He was with my family, accompanying my family to Jammu Kashmir, to Srinagar at that point of time. And I remember we were on a houseboat and it's one of those fake memories sometimes that stick to your mind. Probably because at that point it was not very pleasant. But today, when you think back and remember it, it, it gives you a lot of hope. And that comment was, early morning, and I was a young child, we are not used to getting up early morning. It wakes us up early morning on a summer holiday to Srinagar in a houseboat in Dalde. And I'll say it in Hindi because that's how he had said it. Chalo bhai sab utho. Suraj dekho, suraj ubarne wala hai, nikalne wala hai. Hum sab dekhte dekho, kirne kaise aaste aaste upar hai. And I tell you, all of us kids in the family were so unhappy to have him get up early morning to just <laughs> look, watch the sunrise. But that's one memory that's etched in my mind now for almost 45, 43 years. Which has not gone away. We used to call him Chaja Ji. Chaja Ji waking us up early morning. Kya utke surat dekho. Aam chutni bana ke aaya ya subay chhe baje utke surat dekhne thodi aaya. But that was the beauty of Kashmir. That was Kashmir at its very best. Tourism was flourishing. The last time I went as a tourist to Jammu Kashmir was probably now over 16 or 17 years ago. And I seriously regret that gone are those good old days when we could really hop across to Jammu Kashmir and have a good time. We did go for a number of official meetings as ministers, but then you have a lot of security and you have all the administration and establishment. But as a tourist, the joy of going to Jammu Kashmir was something else. Only. And uh, I think this very, very important step to bring back the people of Jammu and Kashmir to win back their confidence and make Jammu and Kashmir an integral part of India is going to usher in a new trajectory of growth, of well-being, a better future for the people of Jammu and Kashmir, creation of more and more and better infrastructure in the days and months and years to come, as my great uh, Smriti Raniji just mentioned. And I have no doubt in my mind that as this step has demonstrated to the world that we are now one nation with one constitution, that spirit with which Dr. Shama Prasad Mukherjee had entered Jammu Kashmir and actually laid down his life for the sake of uh, the country and the unity and integrity of the country, that spirit has finally got redeemed in my view. And I think it's a great opportunity for all of us to complete that unfulfilled agenda that Sadar Patel had left behind. Let us get back to good governance in Jammu and Kashmir. Let us get back to taking better and better infrastructure to see, to getting more businesses to come in and establish there. And my own experience in the last six months as Commerce and Industry Minister has been that wherever I got a chance to speak about this, including in countries like the UAE, there was a lot of interest and a lot of excitement about coming and investing in the valley, in Kashmir Valley. We had food processing companies talk to us about their interest in setting up food processing units there. They can clearly see that the Kashmir apple or the walnut, all of these have huge potential to grow. I was told saffron used to be a speciality of Kashmir. We've lost, we've lost a huge international flavor or demand for Kashmir saffron, which we have to get back into the valley. And there are several such opportunities, which I'm sure during the course of the day you will also be deliberating on. And Siddharth, I hope you will share with us what your uh, outcomes are on the economics uh, side. 
I won't delve into the politics of it much today, but certainly the people of Jammu Kashmir have been deprived for far too long. We are now 72 years after independence. We are shortly going to celebrate the 75th anniversary of independence. This political integration will certainly lead to an economic integration of Jammu Kashmir and that, ladies and gentlemen, requires a collective effort. It will be a collaborative process, it will be a cooperative process. We will have to work with the local people. We will have to go that extra mile. We will have to be supportive, even in the face of certain adversities or some setbacks that may come in. But this is the time the rest of the nation has to stand up to this challenge, to this imperative and finally bring the people of Jammu and Kashmir into the national mainstream, bring back all those people who have possibly left Jammu and Kashmir for a variety of reasons, give them an opportunity to come back to their motherland. I remember one of my official visits to Srinagar, I went to that temple on the top of that hill, Shankaracharya. My wife was also with me. We both were at the Shankaracharya Mandir and from the top you can see the Srinagar city. And while we were standing there and watching, there was a couple on our right and another couple on our left. Both of them were actually deeply engrossed amongst each other separately. In with a finger pointing out there, there, this, that. So we got into a conversation and both were trying to locate their home, where their families had lived many, many years. And it was such a heart-wrenching sight, also thought-provoking, because at that point of time, I remember a journey that I had, I had taken to Pakistan about I would say 10 years ago or so, more than 10 years, my father passed away in 2008. So this is about 14 year old story when I went to Pakistan as a part of an industry delegation from Mumbai. And I was visiting Lahore. My father had studied there. My mother had stayed there in her family. I first went to see my mother's home, given the little description that she was able to give and the address that she remembered. Her father used to work in a military dairy farm. So I was able to locate that place. I was able to locate the area which didn't have the large military farm that it must have had maybe 80 years ago or whenever they were in the 40s, early 40s. But it had small row houses. But a man sitting on a charpai on a court who was sitting there when I started getting into a conversation with him was able to say, ah, sir, this is the place where the whole military dairy farm was going to be a manager. The government has made all the small and small houses here. And that's, that feeling that thinking that my mother had spent her childhood there, I, I can sense that same feeling in my father. And that was the same feeling in those two couples when I was at Shankaracharya. And that same day, I tried to locate the college and the hostel where my father had studied and stayed. I went to a wrong college. Probably there are two BAV colleges. You may know, I don't know. I went to a wrong college first, continuously talking to my father on the mobile. He said, no, this is not the college. This was not either near the station or that. It was, I don't recall now. So this is not the place. So I asked local people, went to the actual college, saw the college. Then went to the hostel of that college. By that time it was sunset. And as I was trying to locate his room, talking to him on the phone again and again, the whole children got together, some faculty members, teachers got together and they actually were trying to help me locate the room. We couldn't locate that room for a long time. Finally, my father told me that that room used to be allotted to the topper of the universe. As soon as I said that, everybody unanimously said, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. and then took me to that room. So, this I'm talking, 
and he was a student in the 40s, so probably yeah, 80, 85 years ago. वो परंपरा आज भी पाकिस्तान के हॉस्टल देखने को मिली है. As soon as I said that, I straight away went into that room. From the window of the room, I, I on my on the mobile, I told my father. The room से एक चौराया दिख रहा है, सामने एक सड़क है. और दोनों तरफ सड़क है क्या यही था इससे यस यही कमरा अब सोचिए अगर हमको आज पाकिस्तान जाके अपने पूर्वजों अपने पिताजी उनका घर देखना पड़े क्या एक आजाद भारत में भारत के अंदर किसी को ऐसे जाके शंकराचार्य मंदिर से घूमना पड़े ये कदाए पे किसी को मंजूर हो सकता है समथिंग इट इज अनएक्सेप्टेबल इन ए कंट्री विच इज यूनाइटेड एज वन Which has one flag, one constitution, one law, and I think, uh, to my mind, it's the greatest service that the honourable Prime Minister and Home Minister could do to the people of India and to the people of Jammu and Kashmir. Give them an opportunity to be a part of the country. Bring back that spirit of oneness in the country, which <coughs> somehow always had a carrier. We have been able to bring the people into the national mainstream. It's time now that we start looking at all the various projects. You will observe that in the last five years, we've been trying to take a number of projects to the state, and despite a lot of adverse circumstances, we have successfully taken power to every home in Jammu Kashmir. Despite a lot of difficulties, we have been able to develop railway links and lines. Which are progressing. Unfortunately, for some period of time, there was a hiatus. But we are now once again empowered and able to rekindle these projects into fast tracking them and getting them on board quickly. It's time that these 15 million people, one and a half crore people of Jammu and Kashmir, Leh, Ladakh, Kargil, they all get an equal opportunity to come into the economic development. I'm sure they will benefit from all the laws that have been enacted over the years, whether it's the Right to Information Act, whether it's the Safai Karmachari Act, the rights for the daughters of Jammu and Kashmir, the laws for atrocities against uh, Dalits, the reservation for scheduled tribes, something which was not uh, enacted in Jammu and Kashmir for all these years, the law for providing reservation for economically backward. Uh, people, all of these, I'm sure, will help the people of Jammu and Kashmir come into the national mainstream, give a benefit to the poorest of the poor, and give them a chance to really look for a better future for their children. In fact, as the honourable Home Minister mentioned during the launch of Vande Bharat, the train from New Delhi to Katra, it's a direct train, leaves early morning from New Delhi railway station, takes you to Katra. From where you can go straight to have darshan at Vishnu Devi Temple, and it returns the same day in the evening. It's a top-class train, a train which is a symbol of Indian engineers and workers' ability to create a world-class product. I would invite you to do that journey, experience what facilities are now reaching Jammu and Kashmir, and at the launch of that uh, Vande Bharat. From New Delhi to Katra, the Honorable Home Minister has said, Jammu and Kashmir will be among the most developed in the next ten years, and that is the mission of this government. <laughs> There are several initiatives for the economic integration of Jammu and Kashmir that we have to all work together for, but it's time to look ahead. It's time to look into the future. Unless we look ahead, we will all the time be looking into the past and remaining in regret or remorse. I think it's time we look forward to the future. We plan, we craft a better, better future for the state. And for all of this, I think what is required most is a change in the mindset. The biggest challenge before all of us is to change the mindset of the local people. And all of us who are expected to support 
the state, the unit territories of Jammu Kashmir and Leh Ladakh. All of us will have to work collectively to change our mindset, understand the difficulties of the local people, and help them also get back the confidence in the economic future of the people of Jammu Kashmir. The centre will have to work for it. Different states can also help with their own experiences and their own expertise. Both the public and the private sector has a role to play in it. NGOs have a big role to contribute in. And of course the local residents whose support will be required to absorb and accept this change, this era, new area that we are all working for. I see no reason why Jammu Kashmir needs to be there again. The world knows the beauty that Jammu and Kashmir has to offer itself can make tourism one of the biggest revenue earners for the local people of Jammu Kashmir. In fact, uh, I still remember a statement that somebody who was on the Amarnath Yatra or three or four years ago had shared with me, they were on the, they were slated to go for the Amarnath Yatra and there was some terrorist incident and the Yatra had to be curtailed and they were not able to go so they turned back and were uh, back as many of us feel, we often say that maybe Gulawa is not here, it is easy to go, if you don't go, we satisfy ourselves by saying that this time Gulawa is not here. But you know the, the people who were riding those horses on which they were coming back were literally in tears. They were saying that this Atanwadi is our daily routine. Our daily routine is our daily routine. Who is the one 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 who is the one. But it's, it's so sad that Kuch Shogu ke, I think either their own economic interests got hurt or the interests or their alignments were not with the nation but were with some other people whose allegiance was not to our nation. That just for the sake of a few people's personal interests, the nation has suffered. And I think. Uh, this is where forums such as this, and I see a lot of friends from Jammu Kashmir in this room here today, can play an important role to take this message to them, how this will impact their future, how this will lead to a better future for the people of all the regions. I remember there was a time dry fruits used to come from Jammu Kashmir, a lot of which are now imported from all over the world. Apples, I hate it when in the morning I have to have an apple with a plastic sticker on it. It irritates the hell out of you when you have to take out that sticker. Not only for that sticker, for the, but for the fact that in the market you did not get a Kashmiri apple, but you got an apple which was not Indian in origin. It hurts you when you don't find cherries in enough measure to be able to meet the needs of such a large country and you have to allow cherries to come into the country. Can we not bring back greater degree of Investment in apples, in walnuts, in other dry fruits, in cherry. All of these are products which are intrinsic to Jammu Kashmir. The Pashmina wool of Jammu Kashmir. Why should only a select few have Pashmina shawls? Why can that not become a big activity for export from India? It's a very valuable product. And we are all often using Harino wool. Which is no patch, no class to the Pashmina bull that Jammu Kashmir has to offer. Solar radiation. Leh Ladakh has some of the finest radiation. Our solar panels can go up to 35-40% I've told in some regions in Jammu and Kashmir. Particularly in the Leh Ladakh Kargil region. I am uh, told that the Ministry of Power has now revisited the project to set up large scale uh, solar facilities, utility scale solar plants in Leh Ladakh region and combine that with large scale transmission lines coming in from there so that we can start serving the power needs of the country and integrate the power generated over there with the power needs of the nation 
so that it can be a huge employment generator, it can bring a lot of economic activity, as well as provide huge capital to that future. Because even if your land is taken on rent, they did not alienate their land. They can just rent out that land. The rentals that they will earn will also be a phenomenal boost to the economy of that future. In fact, for that matter, my first visit as a minister in the government of Prime Minister Modi was also to that region. I had gone for the dedication to the nation of some uh, hydro projects uh, in Leh Ladakh. And I still remember when I reached there, the army men were showing me that look of those hills, the Pakistani army people are positioned. Literally, they were telling me from the ground. And I was psyched out. I said, the Prime Minister just going to act. And you're going to drive through this road. He said, don't worry. We have everything under control. They seek up all the Baka I said, I remember the army man. That was the confidence of our armed forces protecting our borders. And, and really, to my mind, it's, it's a time where food processing, tourism, different product juices or jams and what not have you, all of these can bring, bring sustainable development to Jammu Kashmir, can bring long-term economic prosperity to the region, it can bring balanced development to the various parts of Jammu Kashmir rather than focusing all development in one or two areas, we can look at a much larger span of development reaching the interiors. After all, we've been able to take toilets to every home. We've been able to take electricity to every home. Similarly, as Didi was just saying, we can certainly look at skill development in a bigger way. We can look at tourist guides, the local people becoming tourist guides, learning new languages. Maybe if the people there learn Spanish, French, we could try and attract visitors to come over there. Maybe if the celebrations of the Kashmir festival get more popularized or movies start getting made in Jammu Kashmir again, like they used to be in the good old days, Kashmir ki Kali and what not had been. I mean, many of you must have seen that Siddhaki na Milenki Dubara. That one movie has ignited tourism to Spain like never before. So many people have started going to Spain to see that Tomatino festival or whatever. That It was beautifully portrayed, of course. But a lot of people are going to Spain during that period to, have a, to experience that. I think Kashmir offers far more than just that Tomatino festival. There's so much more that Kashmir can offer to the people across the world. But as Pandit Dindyal Pate had said when he articulated his philosophy of Antyode, the measurement of economic plans and economic growth cannot be done with those who have risen above on the economic ladder, but of those who are at the bottom of the ladder. I think this will have to be the benchmark, will have to be a guiding force when we make the plans for Jammu Kashmir. We'll have to see that these plans reach the common man at the bottom of the pyramid, the last man standing should see the impact of this on his life, a better future for his children. For far too long, a few families have cornered the benefits of development in Jammu and Kashmir. It's time now that these benefits went to the last man at the bottom of the pyramid. We truly saw the people see a better future for their children. We have hydropower projects as a good potential. We have a huge potential in terms of the pharma sector. There's a good potential for research and development. There's enormous potential when it comes to taking the culinary delights of Jammu Kashmir to the rest of the country and to the rest of the world. I told the delicacies of Jammu Kashmir are just just outstanding in terms of taste. I, I may not have much of an experience being a vegetarian, but possibly there must be some nice vegetarian delights also, which one day Siddharth will invite me for. <laughs> but that itself can be such a huge potential in terms of the outreach and taking 
products of Jammu and Kashmir to the rest of the country and the world. I mean, one can keep going on and on. And there's a never ending potential. One and a half crore people and a better life for one and a half crore people should become the collective responsibility of all of us in this country. Let 130 crore Indians take it upon themselves that we feel responsible. We are going to contribute, we are going to participate in bringing that change which we always wanted to see in Jammu and Kashmir. Let all of us collectively think what role we can play, what contribution we can do. And I am not talking of money contribution. I am talking of your time. I am talking of your mind. I am talking of your ideas. I am talking of your involvement in the reconstruction and a better future for Jammu Kashmir. In my own way through the railways, I am making my humble effort to integrate Jammu Kashmir railway links with the rest of the country. The Udhampur, Srinagar, Baramula rail link of 272 kilometers will finally join the Kashmir Valley with the rest of India. The work on that about 161 kilometers is already completed. The Katra Banihal section of 111 kilometers is going on. The Chenna Bridge which unfortunately got stuck because of some uh, terrorist activities. Work has now started. It will be the highest bridge in the world. And we are very confident, we are hopeful that uh, having declared this as a super critical project, we will be able to complete it in a defined timeline. We have also completed location survey of a 475 kilometer Bilaspur Manali Lake new broadcast rail line. It's a very expensive railway, but we are looking to see how we can bring that onto the national map. We'll uh, need to study the strategic importance and weigh the consequences of that on the overall development of that region, as well as what it will, what impact it will have on the defense uh, of the region. Taking all of that into mind. A number of initiatives that we are trying to do in Jammu Kashmir. We started the Vista Dome. I don't know if any of you had a chance to visit. We have a beautiful Vista Dome coach which has glass on all sides. So while you are traveling on that coach, you have a full 360 degree or, or I would say 270 degree vision on of the uh, entire sky, particularly when it's snowing. I think I've got a small uh, clipping and showed it to you. It's beautiful. When it's snowing and people are traveling on that train, it's truly a delight. And uh, we're now making a Vista Road coach, which will be used in that region. And as it snows, as the beauty of Jabu Kashmir expresses itself, I think these are those small initiatives which will help to make Jabu Kashmir once again, the paradise on earth that we always associated uh, with Jammu Kashmir, the government is working on significant incentives and steps to promote industrial development and give a boost to investor sentiment in the region. I'm sure with the peace that has largely been established in that region, more and more people would like to set up industry there, would like to invest in that region. In fact, companies as in Dubai and Abu Dhabi were talking about investing in the valley. There is that much potential that they can see. It's time that we started seeing that potential and cashing that potential. We plan to set up inland container depots over there. We are looking at GI tagging of the local products, the geographical indicator tagging, which will give us recognition all over the world. Things like apricots is being processed right now. We are looking at GI tagging of sea buckthorn, which I am told is also present in Jammu Kashmir. It's unique in the Ladakh region. Uh, the sea buckthorn plant was found in Ladakh region and has the capacity to tolerate harsh weather and temperature between minus 40 degrees to plus 40 degrees. This range of temperature the sea buckthorn can withstand. Several measures to set up modern institutes, institutes of eminence, skill development centers, several measures that this government is planning to initiate in that region. I have no doubt in my mind that we are looking for a glorious future for this region, 
as a part of India, as an integral part of India, and you will hear more about it in the days to come. You will hear more about it in the budget that will be announced. The industrial development and prosperity for the people of Jammu Kashmir, Leh, Ladakh, Dalai is the responsibility of all of us assembled in this room and those who are not here today. Let us work together for a better and brighter future for our children in Jammu and Kashmir. My best wishes to this initiative, Kashmiranomics. I'm sure you will come up with some wonderful suggestions which can help us doing our job better. Thank you very much. Thank you.